Ibn Rajab was speaking about the uh, mufasid or some of the wickedness of the person who belittles, uh, seeks to belittle someone, uh, be, seeks to belittle a scholar or another da'i or what have you, uh, and refute them with a wicked intention, with the intention out of hatred in order to belittle him. And so he says, first, the insinuation that this scholar's refutation of the other opinion was done out of hatred, seeking to belittle the other scholar, and as a result of following his desires. But in reality, he only desires by it to advise the believers and to make known some aspect of knowledge that is unlawful to keep concealed. So here, this actually he's talking about here, this is the mufasid and the wickedness that someone who is blameworthy can try to turn the tables on someone who is criticizing them based on kitab or sunnah with the intention of advising the community. So, for example, someone from Ahl Sunnah can refute someone from Ahl Bidah. Then perhaps that person from Ahl Bidah will say, look, they're just trying to belittle me. And they are, uh, <clears throat> so they try to bring up hatred for the person who's refuting them based on kitab wa sunnah, based on a sound intention in order to advise the ummah from the mistake this individual fell into, but they're trying to turn the tables and make that person to uh, seem uh, as a, an evil person. And this is what Ibn Rajab is referring to. And then he says, second, he, the evil doer, manifests and magnifies the scholar's criticism for the other scholar so that he can fulfill his desire and achieve his evil goal under the pretense of advising and defending the scholars of the religion. This type of evil plotting is similar to the injustice and oppression displayed by the tribe of Marwan and their followers who won the people's affection and at the same time turned these, their people's hearts away from Ali ibn Abi Talib al-Hassan and al-Hussein and their offspring. May Allah be pleased with all of them. Uh, when Uthman عنه, was killed, the Muslim nation did not see anyone possessing more right to succeed them other than Ali ibn Abi Talib. So they pledged allegiance to him. So those who sought to turn the people away from him set about their goal by manifesting the outrageous and scandalous murder of Uthman. And it was just as they said it was. But then they added to it that the one who conspired his murder and carried it out was none other than Ali ibn Abi Talib and this was a lie and a slander against him so this is how this is an example in Islamic history of how the people of evil turned the tables on ulama and more importantly on sahaba the the rules uh, the salaf salih and Ali would swear and reaffirm his oaths in denying this accusation and he was truthful and innocent in his oath may Allah be pleased with him but then they began to fight against him, claiming that their struggles for the sake of the religion and that it was pleasing to Allah, and then they began to fight with his children. These individuals strove hard in publicizing this lie, propagating it on the members of the days of Jumu'ah, and as well as on other occasions in which there were large gatherings. This continued until it settled into the hearts of their followers that the matter was as these individuals said it was, and that the tribe of Marwan had more right to the Khalifa than Ali and his children عنه, due to their closeness to Uthman عنه, and that they had more right to avenge his عنه, death. So in doing this, they were able to unite the hearts of the people against Ali and his sons and turn the people to fight against him and his children after him. عنه, this asserted the kin kingship for them and their rule became established as a result of that. While in privacy, one of them would say to those he confided in something with the meaning, no one amongst the companions was more restrained from causing harm to Uthman than Ali. So it would be uh, said to him, then why did the people revile him? So he would say, respond, the kingship into the Khalifa would not be established if it weren't for that. The meaning of this is that if they did, uh, did not turn the people's hearts away from Ali, and his children, and if they did not attribute the injustice done to Uthman to them, 
the hearts of the people would not feel sympathy for them due to what they knew of their beautiful attributes and honorable qualities, for they used to rush to follow them and pledge allegiance to them in the past. And because of this, the Umayyad uh, dynasty came to an end and the people ceased obeying them. So this caused fitna and fova. And this is the result of people telling scandalous lies and trying to belittle uh, the scholars and the people of righteousness. Then Ibn Rajib, Rahimullah Ta'ala, in the last part of this treatise, he talked about the remedy. He said, so if anyone is tested with this type of plotting, then let him fear Allah and seek his aid and have patience. For verily the final good end is for taqwa, those who fear and are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is as Allah the Most High says, after narrating the story of Yusuf and what befell him from the different types of abuse he received from his brothers in their plotting and conspiracy against him, he says, وَكَذَلِكَ مَكَنَّا لِيُوسُفْ فِي الْأَرْضِ And thus we establish Yusuf in the land. And Allah says, reporting from him, that he said to his brothers, I am Yusuf, and this is my brother Benjamin. Allah has indeed been gracious to us. And he, the Most High, tells us of the story of Musa and what befell him and his people from the abuse they received at the hands of Fir'aun and his evil planning, and that he, Musa, alayhi salatu wasalam, said to his followers, Seek help in Allah and be patient. Verily, the earth belongs to Allah. He gives it to whom he wills of his servants. And the final good and end is for those who have taqwa. <clears throat> Furthermore, Allah informed us that the bad consequences of evil plotting fall back upon the one who plotted the evil in the first place. As he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but the evil plot encompasses only he who makes it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and thus we have set up in every town great ones of its wicked people to plot therein, but they plot not except against their own selves, yet they perceive not. Furthermore, the actual facts also bear witness to this. For indeed, if someone carefully investigates the information of the people and the history of the world, he will come upon occurrences where someone plotted against his brother, but the plot fell back onto him. And astonishingly, that served as a means for his salvation and deliverance. And if we were to mention some of the events that did occur with regards to that, this book would be prolonged and the talk would be lengthened. Thus, Allah is the one who grants what is correct, and it is upon him to explain the correct way, and he is sufficient for us and the best of guardians. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon Muhammad, his family, and his companions. Uh, Ibn Rajab ended his treaties uh, with letting us know a very important lesson, that the evil will fall upon the evil doer. So it is upon the person who is being spoken about to be pain, remain patient. That if someone is being spoken about unjustly from Ahl Sunnah, and in fact, unfortunately, and even from Ahl Bid'ah, if they're being spoken about unjustly, then they fall upon, they fall under the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, when he said, Fear the da'wah or the du'a of the mazloom, the one who's uh, being oppressed. Because if someone's being oppressed, then their du'a, uh, is, they're one of the people who, whose du'a, whose supplication will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this should show us to be cautious in speaking about people so that we do not uh, oppress someone and that they do not supplicate against us. And perhaps their supplication will be accepted by Allah and we will be humiliated and we will be harmed and we will have our good taken away from us. So this sh shows us, Ahabatifillah, that is imperative that we speak with justice, that not everyone should enter into these affairs of speaking about in uh, you know, individuals, about their errors, about Ahl Bid'ah, that this is reserved for those people who have knowledge and knowledge of these affairs, and they should have knowledge and taqwa before entering into these affairs. And that this injustice will come back to you. So be very cautious, Ahabat in who you speak about. And I've already spoken about some stories, uh, some real events that happened in my life, 
with regards to sitting with the ulama in certain situations. One particular situation, I went to Sheikh Ali Nasser al Thaqih, one of the major scholars in Medina. And I was with another brother, another uh, Sheikh, mashallah, tabarakallah, Yahafdhu Abu Abdurrahman, Ihab, Nadr. And we asked the Sheikh some questions, and I asked the Sheikh about you know, some of the big Hizbiyun. And I mentioned that, you know, that they, you know, basically stopped short of making tech fit of the leaders. And the sheikh said, you know, where, why are you saying this? You know, he, 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 in essence said, hey, you know, what, you know, bring your, had to Burhanakum and Kuntum Sadiqin, bring your Dalil. What are you saying? And I felt uh, belittled, you know, or, or, or better yet, the sheikh put me in my place. Although the haq was with me, and the sheikh, and the, the, the other sheikh, Sheikh Abd Rahman, he came to my defense and he said, Sheikh, uh, in such and such book, he said this in such and such book, so he had the evidence. But what it showed and illustrated me for me is to be cautious when speaking about individuals, even if it's the haq, even if it's the haq. So you should have taqullah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be cautious about what you speak. And another example, is some of the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah that were spoken about unjustly in Medina in a time by Sheikh Faleh Al Harbi. May Allah guide him, who became one of the, the Hadadiyun, became very extreme in his criticism based on Batil. And at the time, he spoke about Sheikh Ibrahim Rahali, Sheikh, uh, I think, Sheikh uh, Abdullah Bukhari, and Sheikh, uh, Sheikh uh, Abdul Razak. Al-Badr, Allah Ta'ala, and he was speaking about them, and they busied their students with ilm. And I can uh, testify that Sheikh Ibrahim, he didn't busy with that fitna, he spoke with the knowledge. And Sheikh uh, Abdul Razak as well. And Allah raised them to where they got positions in the haram. They speak, you know, you'll see that they, during Ramadan and during other times, that they're giving dorat and speeches in the haram. And teaching people in the haram. Allah raised them where Sheikh Faleh now is not even, you know, his affairs become clear, his extremism and the evil that he was spreading about people has become clear. And Allah humiliated him where he lost many students and no one, uh, you know, his speech is like the buzzing of a fly now. May Allah guide us in him. So the point being, a Allah, is to speak with justice and that being patient when someone is trying to harm you. And this goes back to those kawaid, those four kawaid in the kawaid al, in the asul al thalath in the beginning, where those those benefits derive from surat al asr, where the the uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Well Asar in the Sana Lafi Khusrila Ladina Amin wa Amil Sali Hati wa Tawasu bil Haki wa Tawasu bil Sab. Uh by the time verily mankind is in a lost. So there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared mankind is in a loss. Uh Illa Ladina Aminu, except those who have faith. Illa Ladina Aminu Amin al Sali Hat and do righteous deeds. What to wasu bil haq and they call to the haq wa bil sabr and they call to patience. So this is the that it requires patience in calling to the haq. That people will strive to belittle you, people will strive to dishonor you, people will strive uh, to attack your honor and will lie and be deceitful and do anything to belittle those people calling to Allah, and that it's a patient path. Look what they did to the Prophet wasallam. Look what the, how the Salaf were treated and spoken about by Ahl Bid'ah wa Ahl Zandaka. And this is the Sunnah to Allah. So this is why it's imperative to remain patient. And may Allah bless us with ikhlas, with thabat, and patience. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Any mistakes that contained uh, during the our Darasa and study of the treaties were mine. Anything that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. And may Allah have mercy and bless Ibn Rajab with Jannah and forgive him of his, his sins. And bless the ulama of Ahl Sunnah 
uh, all throughout time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa sallam.